What's going on everybody, Kinetic here and welcome back to Monster Hunter World. In this video I want to talk about the Switch Axe and why I think it's one of the most underrated weapons of the game and show you guys exactly how I use it and why it's so effective. You have to forgive me first though, I'm a little bit sick, I've got a cold, my voice is going to be weird and my energy is going to be a bit low, but I had to make this. Let me tell you why. I was in the, the Rotten Vale, one of the explorable areas here in the game, when I encountered the first Wyvern. If you don't know who that is, don't worry, it's just an NPC that likes to get chatty, drop some knowledge bombs on you, and maybe give you a cool item. And what he said to me, I found to be really interesting, and kind of disturbing at the same time. He said that the Switch Axe, which is the weapon that I'm currently holding right now, is the seventh most popular weapon in the game. I was like, really? Seventh? I mean, come on. I understand how attractive the longsword is and how much fun probably the dual blades are with their fast combos and stuff but really seven that doesn't seem right to me there's something wrong with with that number and i thought to myself well maybe it's because people don't understand maybe they think it's too complicated maybe they're lazy to understand how the axe and the sword forms and the whole switching mechanic works or something like that i was like this is ridiculous i gotta show people how simple this weapon really is and why it's so effective now, I've been using the Switch Axe a long time. I, the first time I used it was in Monster Hunter Portable 3rd, and it was really good. And I proved how good it was, and a little bit about my own skill, when I took on Jinoga, one of the hardest monsters in the game, with just a Switch Axe. I went in there with no armor, basically naked, and I fought and beat Jinoga with just the Switch Axe. I think that speaks volumes about how good the Switch Axe is. Yes, so, let's talk about it then. The Switch Axe comes in two forms. It comes in its axe form like this, and it comes in its sword form like this. To switch between the two different forms, you simply hit the R2 button and it switches back and forth. Now, you'll mainly be using the axe form most of the time. The reason for that is because while you are hitting with the, the axe, form, you're actually building up energy to be stored and used up for the the sword form. And that's represented up there in the top left by that blue bar. It's currently already full, but we'll, we'll see how it gets drained while we're in the, the sword form here pretty soon. So before we get to that, though, we're going to talk about how to use the, the axe form. Now, like any weapon, I think, in Monster Hunter, the best way to, to unsheathe it is to be moving and hit at the same time with it. So moving with the, the left analog stick and then just press triangle, you'll take it out and you'll perform a short horizontal attack. Now the triangle button I use primarily for its vertical attacks, even though it starts here with a horizontal attack. If you hit it a second and then a third time, it, it'll perform a backswing and then an overhead slash. This has a lot of reach for doing things like hitting, possibly cutting off tails, or getting those annoying enemies like Rathian, Rathalos, or, or some kind of flying enemy that's just above you, but is, is, is out of reach for most of your moves. Well, this is going to hit them, most certainly. And like I said, can be very effective also with those powerful swings at cutting off tails. And that's mainly what I use the, the triangle for. What I use the X form for the most, though, is for its horizontal attacks. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Just by pressing the circle repeatedly, you can see that I'm using these wide swings back and forth to hit the central post here. And look at the stamina bar, if you didn't notice it already. With every swing, I'm draining up my, my stamina, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. With all that stamina comes a lot of swinging and a lot of pain that you're dishing out with that, uh, that simple button press right there. And the best part about it is while you're doing that, and the best time to do that would be when an enemy is disabled, right? It's trapped in a trap, it's knocked over, it's just maybe tired and it's not moving a lot or something like that. That's the best time to whip out the, the circle button to start hitting over and over and over and over again like that. And as you just saw, even though I'm basically positioned right in front of the post here, I managed to hit this barrel over here. And that really is the best part. Because let's say that this is the center of the monster right here. 
and we're on the feet side, not the back side. And let's say this is the head over here, and then this is the tail over here. If you just moved a little bit towards the head side here, for example, and then you start swinging away with the, the horizontal, look at that. You'll be hitting both the feet area and the head at the exact same same time you'll be hitting multiple parts of the monster breaking possibly multiple parts of the monster in just a very few short seconds that's the best part about the horizontal swing again same thing here if you're over by the tail maybe you're really trying to get that tail cut uh but you can also while you're doing that be hitting the the feet or maybe you are on the back side you could be hitting and clipping those wings of of rathian while also damaging its tail at the same time it's extremely effective at hitting and damaging multiple parts of the monster, especially if it's knocked over and getting those parts broken faster. So now that we've talked about the axe form, and that's really it. That's that's exactly how I use the weapon, and I get a lot of good damage out of that form. Let's talk about the, the sword form. I already mentioned that while you're using the, the axe, Form of the switch axe you're building up this energy into that blue line that blue bar up there to fill up and get ready to use the the sword when is the best time to use the sword form i think is what a lot of people want to know well it's when you've got your energy completely stored up really is the best time and when you are swinging with the, the sword form here take a look again at that blue bar you can see with every attack i'm basically draining away now that energy that I've been storing up. And once you've completely run out of energy, and if you've just been mindlessly hacking away with it like this, once it goes completely dry and empty, you will be forced into this autom automated animation that switches you from the sword form to the axe form. And if this happens at the wrong time, it can leave you vulnerable. So just a word of warning, you gotta keep that in mind when you're about to run out of energy. But really there's a way that we can sort of prevent it and I'll talk about that here in a second. So you want to wait until you've got your energy completely stored up for the uh, the sword form. But still, as soon as it's full, that isn't maybe necessarily the best time to be using it, in my opinion. The best time to, to use the, the sword form of the switch axe is when you really want to get a lot of really good vertical hits in. I already mentioned that the axe form is pretty good at doing that, but the sword form is way better. So what I tend to do is I wait until, for example, that moment, maybe when I'm fighting what I know is a flying enemy, it's gonna start hovering above me, start clawing me or something like that. That's when I tend to save the sword form. Or if I'm really looking to get a lot of damage in on the monster's tail to try and get that cut. That is the best time, in my opinion, to be using the, the sword form. So we've, we're gonna go ahead and instead of just hitting R2 to switch over to the sword form, you can do it in mid combo. So while you're going ahead and whacking away here with your, your switch axe, be it vertical or horizontal swing, go ahead and hit, there you go, R2 once and it performs an amazing combo while you're doing the wild swing circle attacks into the sword form. It's really quite impressive. And now, as I mentioned, look at the reach that we have and, and it's all vertical now. It's no horizontal like with the axe form. All these horizontal attacks are gone and we got pure vertical attacks now in the sword form. Now you can do horizontal if you wish and you get double slashed by just pressing circle once, which is really good. And that's essentially it for the moves that you'll be doing with the Sword form. No, it's not. <laughs> the best part about the sword form is the element discharge. Over there on the, the left side, you can see by pressing triangle and circle at the same time, we're going to basically discharge the rest of the energy that we have built up there in our energy bar and use it in a very awesome and explosive way. So press triangle, circle, and then mash triangle a bunch of times and you just get this awesome explosion and a lot of pain dealt while also having a, a very smooth way to switch back to the axe form. Look at that. We've already switched back to the axe form by, by doing it like that. 
uh, rather than swinging until we're out of energy and then we get into this weird animation that leaves us vulnerable, that's a better way to, to get yourself switched back to the X form and start filling it back up so that way you can get back to that sword form. So that's really it. Like you're using the X form to build up your energy to then switch over and just burn through all this energy you've been building up and do explosive amounts of damage with the switch axe. So what do you guys think of the switch axe so far? It's not that complicated, is it? It's actually quite simple. Let's put it now into right. practical use. We're gonna jump into a high-ranking mission and I've got somebody in mind that I want to use this against. We're gonna go for a crown of mud and anger hunting quest, HR 11 or higher, and we're going to be fighting a Baroth, or Boroboros if you played the Japanese version. <laughs> Crown of Mud and Anger, let's do this. And there he is. What is it doing? Is it... Oh, I see. It's marking its territory. See that? Look at that black spot now on the rocks. Basically just rubbed up against the... <laughs> I've never seen it do that before. Rubbed up against the wall to, uh, to leave its mark. Mark its territory, basically. Baroth was here. Alright. That was fun. Now let's do what we came here to do. I like picking up all this stuff if I can for the points. I don't think we really want to fight him here in this uh, narrow passageway anyway, so let's wait till... Yeah, here we go. Oh, this is gonna good, go good right here. While he's distracted. So, like with just about any weapon, I like to position myself right about there. Right about on the side there where the leg is, sometimes in between. That head is awfully hard though. Uh oh, we got hit with mud. A lot of mud, actually. Completely drained me. <laughs> well played, Baroth. Well played. I wasn't expecting him to stick around though. Usually when you fight an enemy like that and surprise them, they, uh, they'll they retreat quickly to get to an area they're more comfortable with fighting you from. Come on, let's get back to it, shall we? Ugh. Watch that mini-map right there. When it starts glowing red, hold on to R2 real tight. And then get back to hitting with triangle. Oh. Once we've gotten in enough hits. This is going to be an explosive finish to this ride. Come on. Here we go. Rapidly press triangle now. Just like an elemental discharge, and boom! Like I said, explosive ending. Let's get some hits on that tail. Not bad. Alright, we're about running out of energy though. Go ahead and just hard switch. That was a bad place to be. He'd easily tail swipe me over and over like that. Look at that. <laughs> As he's trying to. Oh, we broke his head. Nice. Now it might not deflect us as much while we're trying to hit it. And there he goes. Well, it's just as well. My weapon could use the sharpening anyway. So he's, yep, retreated to a location where he can build up more mud on his body. 
a bit too far away for that <laughs> magic to happen. Uh, and I don't know if you can actually mount more than once, but it's still fun to do. Doesn't seem like you can mount more than once. Look at that. Perfect example. I'm hitting the legs and the tail with this swing. Alright, we don't want to get caught with that mud. I think we're okay. Oh, look at that. Crippled him a bit there. And watch out! Ah, oh, saw it coming, but I was already invested in the move. Alright, we can go ahead and switch over to our sword form. Ah, don't do that now, come on! Ah, really? He's retreating already. Not entirely, though. He's just trying to get some mud on himself. Okay. Well, now we have to be careful, because that mud can really cause us big problems. I'm trying to get that tail. I want that tail. That mud and that tail. Oh, he almost got me. Damn, that head. All right. Oh, 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 oh. I think we. I thought the tail broke there for a second. It was just mud coming off from hitting the tail. Notice the uh, the head isn't deflecting the, the sword attacks like it does the uh, the axe form. We didn't have enough energy to to have an explosive finish. Really, I thought he didn't have any more mud on him. My mistake. And there goes the tail. It is officially cut off. Bear Elf isn't feeling too good right now. And I think he's going to retreat. Yep. There he goes. Alright. Our first prize. A piece of the tail. Awesome. There can't be much more left of him. He's going to get tired here pretty soon and want to take a nap, and that's going to spell the end of this fight. There you are. How you feeling, Baroth? Exactly where I didn't want to be. I tried to move. A little bit too late, though. That is that animation I'm talking about. It can get you in trouble if it happens at the wrong time. Oh, look at you. Already limping. Alright. Let him go for now. And he's taking a nap. No surprise. Had a rough day, haven't you, Baroth? Sorry, it's gonna be over soon. I promise. Let's see. We need to find a place to put a pitfall trap. This place is mud, mud, and... Well, more mud. I think over here we can set it up, actually. Let's go ahead and do that. Pitfall trap ready. Little wake up call. Back to our pitfall trap. And in you go. There you go. Switch axe in action. 
That's gonna do it for this video, guys. That's really all I wanted to do is uh, show off the Switch Axe, show off how I use it, why I like it, and why I think it should be better than seventh place in terms of uh, weapon popularity. Not like I really care, but I kind of do. <laughs> anyway, that's gonna wrap it up for this video. Again, I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know what you think of the Switch Axe down in the comment section below. Click the like button to support Monster Hunter World here on the channel and make sure you subscribe because I got a lot more videos coming up. Thanks again for watching. This is Kinetic and I'll see you next time.